on problem set zero. So we'll be back in five minutes. All right, so we are back. And so in our quickly now, we're, at the, we're nearing the end of the first lecture, and we're going to start introducing programming. Um, but we're not going to be doing it with a text-based programming language. We're going to do it with, um, with Scratch. And what's interesting about Scratch is that if you go to the website, it's sort of advertised as being for, for kids six and up. So it, it, it has this, this childish look to it, maybe, or a childlike. childlike look mm. to it. But, um, but it's actually quite a powerful language underneath the hood. It is. It has a pretty high ceiling, so to speak, and, and wide walls, to borrow Professor Mitchell Resnick's um, terminology around the, the language. This is an environment that was initially targeted at students in after-school programs, quite young ones, but we actually adopted it some years ago for higher education and for CS50 specifically, so as to introduce some basic programming constructs like loops and conditions and um, functions more recently. We also look at threads and events, so it has this high ceiling in that you can actually cover some pretty sophisticated topics that would actually take weeks in a more traditional language like C or Java to get to, but it's all pretty, I think, within students' grasp early on because we give them examples by way of this portion of the lecture that via which you can apply those constructs to very reasonable problems in a graphical environment, no less. Mm -hmm. And my god, I mean, look at the most canonical program you might write in C just to say hello world. There's so much syntactic overhead. Yeah, it's, it's a little heavy the first time you see it. The include, the int, the parentheses, the semicolons, I mean, none of which are intellectually interesting. You really want to get that at the heart of the program, which really is just printing a message like hello world. And we can do that with Scratch. Now, we've been using Scratch since 2007, but since um, since then, there's been a number of other drag and drop programming languages like Snap or App Inventor. How come we haven't switched to, to using one of those or perhaps allowing for, for mobile development or something like that? So it, it's definitely unfortunate that the current version of Scratch remains based in Flash, which limits the number of devices increasingly that it can be used on. Although that seems to be soon changing. Indeed, indeed. They are making strides with Scratch 3.0 toward being uh, HTML5 and JavaScript based, which will be great. Snap is already there out of UC Berkeley. This mm -hmm. is a uh, adaptation of Scratch that is implemented for web browsers in HTML5 and JavaScript, which works. I've just had a, a certainly a, a personal preference for Scratch. I mean, it's kind of part of our origin story over the past 10 years. Um, so there's that sort of loyalty there. And we only spend just one problem set in one week on it. But it's definitely suboptimal now that some of our students who might want to use a tablet device or, or might otherwise not want to install Flash on their computer these days, it's, it's not great. Um, but I think in terms of capabilities, it's wonderful. And I think even more compelling is the galleries and the shareability online. What MIT really focused on and Mitchell's group uh, focused on in their lifelong kindergarten group is on creating shareability and reusability, remixing, so to speak. And the fact that our students, by just logging into Scratch's website, can share their works not just with each other but the whole world adds a nice, I think, proud opportunity uh, very early on in the class. No, it does. And I think that that focus on the community aspect, which ties in really nicely to CS50's own focus on community, is a really nice touch. And it's a great way to start the term, I think. I think. So. It's a nice way of bookending it, too, because we end, of course, with the CS50 Fair, where students are exhibiting all of these works that they created in other more modern languages or more traditional languages. But right from the get-go, too, can you experience a little taste of that? And I think that's compelling. And you can also learn so readily as a result from other students' programs that are already out there. You can delight in uh, friends' programs or kind of share them around. Mm -hmm. So as such, that feature alone is, is pretty compelling. So we've, we've stuck with it, with it. Notice the Easter egg. Repeat 50 times.